Sometimes interviewers can go too far with their questions, which can cause celebrities to flip out. Like when this interviewer enraged boxing legend Mike Tyson by abruptly bringing up his criminal past. We know you're a convicted r This could hurt his campaign. How would you respond to that? Hey, um, I don't know who said that. You don't even know who said that. You know what I mean? And I don't have no comment to that. You know, because it's negative and you're being negative. Although the interviewer quickly tried to redirect the conversation, it was too late. Tyson was visibly infuriated and had an explosive outburst on live television. You come across like a nice guy, but you're really a piece of Hey, with that come comment. On, come on. That's no, that was a piece of you. That was a piece of you know, we're, we're doing we're doing live TV. Hey, I don't care. What are you going to do about it? Despite multiple efforts by Tyson's manager to get the interview back on track, even he was powerless to stop the boxer's relentless tirade. Is it nerve-wracking for you to do something like this, or is it more nervous for you to box? How does it compare? I don't know. Um, it's more nerve-wracking for me to hear talking to a rat piece of shit like oh, you. come on, Mike. No, because you're a piece of shit. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this interview. Thank you for thank you for coming in. And while it must have been nerve-wracking to sit across from an angry Mike Tyson, this next interviewer appeared noticeably anxious while interviewing Robert Downey Jr. as he prepared to ask a question he must have known was inappropriate. Yeah, well, okay, well then let me just ask you a few more questions and you can answer them if you want to and not if you don't want to. I mean, um, well, I think we've got. Two, three more minutes on our, on our, on our agreement. Your foot's I mean, starting to jump a little bit. You better get to your next question. Despite RDJ's clear agitation, interviewer Krishnan Guru Murthy persisted, finally crossing a line when he asked about the actor's troubled relationship with his father. The reason I'm asking about the past is that you, you've talked in other interviews again about um, your relationship with your father and the role of all of that in, uh, you know, the dark periods you entered and, and taking drugs and drinking and all of that. And I just wondered whether, you know, you, you think you're free of all of that or whether that's still something... I'm sorry, you... I, I really don't. I, I, what are we doing? Downey was clearly caught off guard by the deeply personal line of questioning, eventually deciding he had enough and abruptly ending the interview. Do you... You seem okay, it's just getting a little dinosaur in your... No, no, look, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Krishnan has displayed a pattern of provoking intense reactions from his interviewees. Just look at what happened when he sat across film director Quentin Tarantino. But why are you so sure that there's no link between enjoying movie violence and enjoying real violence? I don't, I, well, I'm going to tell you why I'm so sure. Do not ask me a question like that. I'm not going to, I'm not biting. I refuse your question. Why? Because I refuse your question. I'm not your slave and you're not my master. You can't make me dance to your tune. I, I I'm, not, ever, I'm not a monkey. I'm I can't not, make you answer anything. I'm just it, I'm well, asking and, you interesting and, questions. And I'm, saying, and I'm saying I refuse. Okay, well, no, I was just asking you why. That's fine. An exasperated Tarantino would succinctly explain the reason for his frustration as Krishnan continued to fumble his words. No, but you, you, haven't, you haven't fleshed it out. That, that, that's I, the I, only it, reason. It's not my job to flesh it out. No, it's my, it's my job to try and ask you to. And that's I'm all, shutting you know? your butt down. And that's, that's entirely your that's entirely. This your, is a your, commercial your right. from my movie. But you haven't said why you think there's no relationship. It's none of your damn it. business what I think about that. Well, it's my job to ask you why you think and that. Because you're, I'm you're saying very influential. No. And I'm shutting you down. As Krishnan pressed on, a now infuriated Tarantino would continue to break the fourth wall as he tore down the mainstream media's business model in spectacular fashion. And I have explained even what you're talking about. I'm just not giving it to you. Why? Because I don't want to because I've done it already. I have explained this many times in the last 20 years. I just refuse to repeat myself over and over again because you want me to for you and your show you, you're, and your ratings. Okay, well, no, it's not about our ratings. It's, it's, no, no, it is. It is about you want me to say it for you, for your show, this show right here, yeah. right now. On the other hand, comedian Bill Burr would fire back with his trademark irreverent humor when a disrespectful interviewer implied that his jokes could be considered offensive. Well, I, <laughs> no, the only reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. You know, As far you, as what? Well, they thought that maybe you were being disrespectful to the Christian religion. Who did? So, I'm telling you, you need to Google. <laughs> oh, good Lord. We did maybe two jokes was, about that? Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? 
<laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. <laughs> a couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. Burr, however, could not hide his frustration when interviewers at an Atlanta radio station acted both disrespectfully and unprofessionally towards him. And this is Bill Burr. That's your question? Burr's irritation grew as the amateurish interview dragged on, especially when the host demanded he perform like a trained monkey. He's at the punchline, he's in town, and you're a funny guy. You've got these routines in your head, so I figure I'll toss you a mic and you go. And I'm going to do stand up in front of nine people in a radio station? No, I'm not doing that. Burr's anger became increasingly more visible on his expression when another host interjected, implying that Burr was responsible for how badly the interview was going. I was trying to explain to Bill how you put the mic, uh, warn him that you're going to put the mic in his face without asking him a question. Be prepared for that. Apparently, he didn't take me seriously. But when host Southside Steve began shoving his microphone into Burr's face to intentionally annoy him, the comedian Median decided he would take matters into his own hands and hijack the interview. Do you like my mic? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Please. Is that comfortable? Is this no, uncomfortable? This is, yeah, no, don't, man. Honestly. Can I, can I take the mic? <laughs> sure. Now, that's number, the number one thing you don't do. As I learned that in broadcasting never. school, you never give up the microphone. See, now I have the f power. This next interview with actor Dylan McDermott got uncomfortable fast when comedian Jim Norton unexpectedly brought up the murder of McDermott's mother. So your mom, I know your mom was killed, right? But, but, but did they, there you go. But That's that, what I'm getting to. McDermott did his best to remain cordial. But as the hosts continued joking about his mother's death, it became evident that he found nothing humorous in their remarks. Was it was it something that was ruled accidental and then declared a murder? Yeah, I mean, I really want to get into that now. You know, I'm just talking about Ellie to Vegas, but uh, okay. yeah, it was, it was definitely rough. And, what night uh, is that on? It's on Tuesdays. At night. It's on Tuesday. Tuesdays at night. <laughs> it's not the death slot. Hey, speaking of death, okay. <laughs> what time? <laughs> So, LA to Vegas, I love it. Just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, the hosts subsequently offered McDermott a shot of whiskey, despite it being well known that he's a recovering alcoholic. She explained to me, you know, how it all works, and, uh, whoa. No, no, he's, uh, oh, <laughs> he, he actually, oh, that's right, you, 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 you're in recovery, you don't... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah so that's right. Right. This next interview got physical when actor Will Smith flipped out on a reporter who attempted to force a kiss upon him. Oh my God. Similarly, Hollywood megastar Tom Cruise would unleash his fury on an interviewer who pranked him during a red carpet interview. Yes, 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 yes. That's... Now, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Come here. Come here. Why would you do that? What's so funny about that? It's ridiculous. Do you like making less of people? Determined to confront the offending reporter, Cruz made it clear to his team that he would not move on until he gave the prankster a piece of his mind. That's, that's really... Hey, hey, no, no. Don't run away. Don't run away. Don't run away. No, no, that didn't happen. I don't care. That's incredibly rude. I'm here giving you an interview and answering your questions, and you do something really nasty. You're a jerk. Meanwhile, despite a remarkable fitness transformation, actor Jonah Hill was mocked to his face about his weight, which he understandably did not appreciate. Are you the fat guy in Hollywood still? Or, or is everybody like look at you and they're like, oh wow, you know, this is great, now you're healthy. Uh, do you have any other questions that are smart? Yet in what can only be described as one of the most repugnant interview questions of all time, adult film actress Tasha Rain was subjected to an extremely inappropriate inquiry by the the insufferable Southside Steve. All right, and if we could stop for a second, I want to say to you, you have a very cute, soft, like a girly voice. Thank you. A lot of people say the reason people have girly voices is something bad happened to them at that age. Were you at an early age or were you fine? That's the creepiest question I've ever heard, and no, but it's so inappropriate, it's not even funny. Well, I had a girlfriend once that talked like that, and it turned out six years old. It was horrible. Ew, I don't want to talk about this. Actress Scarlett Johansson would similarly fire back at a disrespectful interviewer who thought it would be a good idea to ask her if she wore underwear while filming The Avengers. Now, were you able to wear undergarments? If You're you the, like the fifth person that's asked well, me no, that. Well, no, because... It... What is going on? <laughs> 
What, since when did people start asking each other about in interviews no, about their no, underwear? No. After receiving pushback from the interviewer, Johansson would double down, clearly expressing her exasperation with the line of questioning. Huh? Is it inappropriate? To ask somebody what kind of underpants they wear? I didn't ask you what kind. You just asked me if I was wearing any. Was I wearing underwear? I mean, gosh, <laughs> ask Joss. This next clip is even more cringeworthy, as a local news anchor mistakenly confuses Samuel L. Jackson with another black actor. The Super Bowl commercial, did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? What Super Bowl commercial? Oh. You know what? I've been my mistake. I, you see know what? what? See, you're you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> oh, That's my fault. Oh, I know boy. that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? Oh. We don't all look alike. Oh, Father, you're oh, exactly right. all black and famous. You but are we all guilty. I am. I I am guilty. Um, I am In this next explosive incident, actor Mel Gibson would flip out on interviewer Dean Richards when Richards unexpectedly brought up the controversies from Gibson's career. Do you think that the the uh, public will perceive you any differently after all that's been in the news about you? What are you referring to specifically? Refer <laughs> referring to the, uh, you know, the uh, drinking problems, referring to what's been called the anti-Semitic rant, referring yeah, that's, that's, all, all, all those I, things. I, I, you, know, you know what I'm yeah, talking about. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, that's almost four years ago, dude. I mean, I've moved on. I guess you haven't. Despite Gibson's clear aggravation, Richards continued to press him, leading to a tense stare down with the actor. I'm just wondering if you think that the, the public has, has moved on and will perceive you in the same light. Well, I certainly hope so. You know, it is a while back. And, uh, you know, I've done all the necessary mea culpas. So um, let's move on, dude. Right. Come on. The interview was then quickly wrapped up, as Gibson abandoned any semblance of professionalism, even uttering expletives as they went off the air. Uh, Edge of Darkness opens uh, today. It's good to see you back in the saddle and uh, doing what you do best. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mel. Take care. Bye-bye. During a notoriously passive-aggressive outburst, actor Billy Bob Thornton became irate on Canada's Q radio show while promoting his band, The Boxmasters. Wanting to be taken more seriously as a musician, Thornton's temper flared when the host ignored his requests to avoid discussing his career in Hollywood. Are you reacting to the fact that I said Yeah, I am. I am, since you're instructed not to talk about shit like that. Yeah, I am reacting to that, yeah. Because I mentioned that you were an actor? And uh, well, first of all, that wasn't, wasn't supposed to be mentioned either. You, know. you, you, you would prefer me to only do this interview not mentioning at all, just yeah, to clarify, that's correct, yes. at all that you've that's ever correct. done anything in terms of acting, screenwriting. That's correct. Meanwhile, actor Matt Damon kept his cool when an ambush journalist insulted him at an education reform rally, suggesting that his strong work ethic is solely due to the lack of job security in his career. In, in acting, you, there, is, there isn't job security, right? There's an incentive to work hard and be a better actor because you want to have a job. So why isn't it like that for teachers? You, so think, you think job insecurity is what makes me work hard? Well, you have an incentive to work harder, but if there's I, job I security, an actor. it's not an incentive. Given that Damon's mother is herself a teacher, he even skillfully transformed the loaded question into a powerful message of support for educators. That's the thing. So you take this MBA style thinking, right? It's the problem with ed policy right now. There's this intrinsically paternalistic view of problems that are much more complex than that. A teacher wants to teach. I mean, why else would you take a shitty salary? and really long hours and, and, and do that job. Yet the most satisfying burn in this interview occurs when the cameraman interjects with a fabricated statistic, only for Damon to absolutely destroy him. 10% of teachers are bad. Where'd you get that number? I don't know, 10% of people in any profession maybe should think of something else. Well, okay, but I mean, maybe you're a Cameraman. In this next painfully awkward interview, actor Jesse Eisenberg was caught off guard when host Romina Puga demanded he perform a magic trick for her. Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well, um, you were like the uh, Carrot Top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, and it's a good thing. It's I'm gonna a good go thing. Cry because... now. No, don't cry now. Cry after the interview's over, because um, otherwise I'll look like it was. Res I'm responsible for it. Okay, so. Um, well, you are. Well, I don't want to know that though. Okay. okay well, so you know now. I said your name into camera, what else do you want from me? A magic trick. Okay. All right, so we so can wrap this up. 
hey, <laughs> you're on my time. And while he did attempt to entertain Puga with a card trick, her standoffish demeanor hindered the interview from improving. Was this should be your card then? Yes. Really? No. It's not, is it your card? I mean, it doesn't matter. No, I mean, it's not. I don't need to be amazed. I already know how it's done. It's not. Okay. Was that your card? Ooh. See? Are you happy you yeah. lied to Yes. point of almost not appreciating right. that? This next interview immediately got off to a rough start when sports commentator Bob Costas opened his conversation with WWE founder Vince McMahon by highlighting the failures of the XFL, a then new football league created by McMahon that ultimately went bust within a year of its debut. Here now, Vince McMahon. Thanks for coming, Vince. Can you guarantee me right now that there will be a year two for the XFL? What a ridiculous statement. What a it's not a statement, it's a question. It's a question, I beg your pardon, it's a question. No. The exchange only got more heated as the interview went on, with McMahon seeming on the brink of hitting Costas over the head with a steel chair. If this turns out to be a grand scale failure... You want to let me finish here for a second, pal? Shut your mouth and let me answer the question, all right? I'll be happy to answer. You got a situation that you don't know what you're talking about. Meanwhile, radio host Jim Rome would deliberately provoke NFL quarterback Jim Everett by calling him Chris, a reference to the female tennis player Chris Everett. Jim, good to have you on the show. Good to be here, Jim. Thank you. Check that. Chris Everett, good to have you on the show. You know what? You know, you've been calling me that for about the last five years. About two years, actually, Chris. Well... Rome had been taunting Everett on air for months, but now the two were finally face to face and Everett demanded that he stop. Somewhere along the way, Jim, you ceased being Jim and you became Chris. Well, let me tell you a little secret that, you know, we're sitting here right now and if you guys want to take a station break, you can. But if you call me Chris Everett to my face one more time, I already did it twice. Better, you better you call one more time. We better stay, take a station break. Well, it's a five minute segment our five segment show. We got a long way to go. Rome appeared overly confident, perhaps assuming his camera crew shielded him from Everett, though he would soon realize that this was not the case. Well, it's good you to know, see you, too. You've been talking like this behind my back for a long but time. But now I said it right here. Right. Exactly. Well, we got no problem. Well, I think, it, I think that you, you probably won't say it again. I bet I do. Okay. Chris? Suddenly, Everett lunges across the table at Rome, with the two tussling on the floor as the station cuts to a commercial break. 